my Bulldogs family. It's the dog father here, and I'm very, very impressed by the win on the weekend. Mr. Serraldo promised me a victory this week. Under very tough circumstances, he made no excuses. I said to him I wanted Mr. Skelton, the prodigy, to join that team. He persisted with Braden Burns and Jake Averillo, my son, and I said, well, you know your neck's on the line, Mr. Serraldo. We don't give too many chances here in the family. And he delivered, and he delivered in a way that gave him a lot of space for the future. I'm very impressed by Mr. Serraldo. He's proven himself in very, very difficult circumstances. But I will say about these young Bulldogs, when I speak to them, they play for Mr. Serraldo. They want to play for Mr. Serraldo, and it's evident on the field. I'm not one to make excuses, but the opposition in the last three weeks that defeated the Bulldogs, which made me very unhappy. Well, they were, well, those same three teams absolutely annihilated opposition teams on the weekend. And why is that relevant? Because none of those teams that they beat had gone through the adversity that our team has. So I'm very proud of the boys, even though I wasn't happy with the scoreline or the results. It's not our way to make excuses, but as one of my, my boys challenged me, he said, he said, I'm sorry to tell you this, dog father, but they couldn't have done any better. Now, normally that would send a man fishing and he wouldn't be coming back. But you know what? He made a lot of sense and he proved it to me on the weekend. Even an old dog can learn new tricks. And that's a lesson to everybody out there. In relation to Mr. Atkins and his performance on the weekend, well, he's been let know in no uncertain terms that if he speaks to the Prince of Belmore like that again, he will find himself getting a phone call from the dog father. And I don't give too many warnings if you know what I mean. Bullshit isn't a swear word where I'm from. And I've got one word for Mr. Atkins and Paul Crawley and all those trying to smother and cover the massive disgraceful calls made by that individual on the weekend. I've got one word for you. Bullshit. The Prince of Belmore did a very good job. He did his job well. And he simply questioned the referee on what that penalty was for. And when the referee told him an absolute lie that everybody saw, what did he say? He said, bullshit, like any man would. And then for Mr. Atkins to hypocritically start yelling back at Josh, and then to take him in front of all the cameras and try and humiliate him, well, guess what? It didn't work, Mr. Atkins. And then we saw that he was still hurting about the little bullshit word that he copped. And then he sent off Corey Waddell, trying to ruin the dog's chances. That's no good, Mr. Atkins. And you know, I hope you learn from your mistakes. It's best to have the dog father's blessing, if you know what I mean. The last part of this that I want to talk about is I'm very happy with Mr. Serraldo. I'm very happy that the boys are playing for him. I'm very happy at the work that Mr. Potter did last year. He blooded a lot of those young forwards that came out and represented the jersey this week, represented the family, and represented the fans and the people. Harrison Edwards was exceptional. Curtis Moran tried his heart out. Carl Olawapu was being developed very, very well. And I was also happy with the young man, Samuel Hughes, who did a fantastic job. 
But again, credit to Mr. Serraldo. He put his neck on the line. He put Braden Burns, one of the, the nephew of the great Rod Silver. He put him in. He got injured again. The boy seemed to be made of glass. But God, he played with heart. And he was my man of the match. His passes and vision to my boy Jake Avarillo were the difference between the two teams. And everyone played with a lot of energy and vigor. We're not getting us ahead of ourselves. The NRL and Mr. Volandis have got a lot of hide to give us that five-day turnaround when they could have easily put a game from Saturday onto the Friday, which didn't involve teams that had, had a five-day turnaround, if you know what I'm saying. Mr. Volandis, it's time that you stop putting the TV rights ahead of the welfare of my boys. I don't care about the other teams either. You can give them four-day turnarounds. All I care about is my, my boys and my people. And a shout-out to our Harold Matthews youngsters and Mitchell Woods and the like. An absolute fantastic performance def defeating the Penrith Panthers in the semi-final and then going on with it and smashing the Newcastle Knights by 32 points to 6. I'm very, very happy with that, and the future's looking bright for the family. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed listening to my little bit of wisdom. I put it out here for you because sometimes you need to hear what's going on in the background at Belmore. And the family's in really good hands with Mr. Serraldo, who's bought himself a lot of time with the way that his boys are playing for him. Take care, everyone. And I'll speak to you soon.